Detachment is synonymous with wealth consciousness. This is because when we are detached from any outcome, we are open to all possibilities. We are wealth magnets because wealth is attracted to adaptability and creation and creativity. Without attachment, we now become free to create whatever we want because we're not attached to the outcome. We're just loving the process. Hey mystics, today we're talking about the law of detachment why it is such an important part of our spiritual practice, as well as how to use it to manifest. So what is the law of detachment? It is staying grounded in the wisdom of uncertainty. I just read this book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, specifically focusing on the law of detachment um, by Deepak Chopra. And he talks a lot about how we are part of this higher intelligence. When things are not going our way or we perceive them to not be going our way, we don't know how everything that's happening is actually working out for us. Behind the scenes, there is so much going on that we're just not aware of. So the law of detachment is about letting go of the idea of how things should be. Knowing that when things are not working out, it's because of a divine reason. It's all part of the divine plan. Uh, recently, I just saw this movie with my partner. It's The Flash. So if you've seen that, it's actually such an amazing movie. He basically, spoiler alert, goes back in time to try to change certain events in his life. And then he realizes it's a canon event, right? He realizes there are certain things in life that will happen no matter what, whether it's traumas that happen to us, people that we lose along the way, certain things have to happen in your life the way that they do. And no matter what you do to try to change it, it will always have happened that way. So we only have this tiny little fractal of limited awareness. We cannot see the more synchronistic and harmonious aspects of how everything is working out perfectly for us. And detachment is synonymous with wealth consciousness. This is because when we are detached from any outcome, we are open to all possibilities. We are wealth magnets because wealth is attracted to adaptability and creation and creativity. Without attachment, we now become free to create whatever we want because we're not attached to the outcome. We're just loving the process. Now let's talk about what attachment actually is. Attachment is clinging on to the perceived known and perceived certainty. And I say perceived because nothing is known and nothing is certain. You can work a nine to five and devote 10 years of your life there, but it's never known and certain that you'll be there until the company succeeds, right? They could let you go yesterday. It's always a perceived certainty. Attachment implies doubt and mistrust in nature's plan and the infinite intelligence that exists. It's based on fear and insecurity, the need to control, and you're not realizing the power that you have as a creator in this reality. So how can you be less attached? Recognizing that all the wealth and all the abundance in the world happens via adaptability and creativity. So if you are feeling very rigid in your thinking, you're trying to control things, you're not accessing wealth consciousness. When we get stuck in rigid thinking, we lose fluidity, we lose flexibility. We are just in a series of repetitive patterns of our past. So we get stuck in this prison of the past and we keep searching for this security, which is actually just an attachment to past conditioning. Wake up every morning as if you have amnesia. Okay, I love that quote. I think maybe that's from Joe Dispenza. But you wake up every morning and you're like, oh, wow, a beautiful day to not be attached to anything, not be attached to yesterday's thoughts, not be attached to yesterday's problems, not be attached to even yesterday's behaviors and addictions and problems or even goals. Maybe the goals are not in resonance with you anymore. Waking up with amnesia every day severs ties from your past conditioning. So don't give your power away. When you're attached to something, you give your power away to something externally. This is very true when it comes to success and failure, especially if you're a content creator online. This is so true. If you post something and it does very, very well and it goes viral, and you get millions of likes and comments and all these shares or whatever, and you give your power away to that success, the ability of the people that you're putting your power into to crush you is amplified, magnified, because you are giving all of them your power to crush you. The same goes for failure. 
I think of Kanye because Kanye is so strong in his power that the entire world could turn against him. And he's like, so what? I don't care if you love me. I don't care if you hate me. I am just me. And this is a really empowering mindset to have. Whether the world loves you, whether the world hates you, you are still you. You are still contributing to God's purpose for you. You are still expressing your one song. The universe means one song. So if you can keep singing your own song, you are doing everything that you need to be doing and you will attract wealth to you. You will attract abundance to you because you are doing what you were designed to do. You are doing what God intended for you to do, regardless of the outcome with zero reward necessary. The journey is the reward. Are you taking action with an attachment to the outcome or just out of pure joy of acting? Ask yourself if there are any areas in your life where you're doing something with an expectation of some sort of return. Maybe you're going to give this homeless person some money because you want a reaction from them. You want them to thank you. What if they don't say thank you? What if they grab the money and put it in their pocket? Are you still grateful for yourself in that act of giving them money? Or did, were you attached to their response? Could you give them money without any acknowledgement of the fact that you did? Could you do the good deed if nobody saw you doing it? Often when we need to practice detachment, it's when we've been very attached to something. Whether it's a person, a job, a location we live in, we have this grasp on it as if it's ours. Let's take rejection as an example. You've probably heard the quote, rejection is protection, rejection is redirection, and also rejection is projection. Rejection is protection because it is protecting us from things that we cannot see. Recently, somebody close to me said, Oh, they just got into a car accident. Things are so unlucky for me. I am such an unlucky person. I just got into this car accident. Why does this happen to me? It's being framed as this is a bad thing. And of course, it's not fun to get into a car accident. But who knows if this person did not get into that accident, maybe something more terrible would have happened. Maybe this little accident happened to prevent something way bigger from happening. Take relationships, for example. Have you ever been sad of a relationship not working out? wanting to grasp onto something and not understanding why it's not working out for you. Who knows if you would have stayed in that relationship and it would have ended up being a super toxic and abusive relationship down the line. Maybe you weren't invited to a specific party and you are all in your feels about it. Oh my God, nobody loves me. Why wasn't I invited here? But maybe had you gone out that night, you would have gotten into an accident that took your life. We don't know what we don't know. We don't understand what we're being protected from. So if you can reframe this little aspect of rejection to rejection as protection, it's so much easier to practice the law of detachment. Rejection as redirection. Anything that rejects us is redirecting us towards something that is more in resonance for us. This is especially true when it comes to business. I mean, I have a Sagittarius North node at zero degrees. If you know anything about astrology, Sagittarians go in very many different directions and zero degrees is like the fool's degree. It's like a beginner degree. So my whole life purpose has been trying and testing out so many different careers and realizing that a lot of them have not been for me, right? I studied in journalism. It was not for me. I studied in event planning and leadership. It was not for me. I've done acting, modeling, even YouTube, you know, and it wasn't for me at the time. I'm getting back into YouTube now because I'm really focused on podcasting, but I've been redirected along the way. I've been rejected in acting. I've been rejected in modeling. I've had opportunities taken from me or so I thought, but I've always been redirected to what the higher frequency was. Now I'm into astrology. I love helping people with their birth charts. I love helping people with their soul's expansion. And I would have never been able to figure that out had I not constantly been redirected in these phases of my life through rejection. So when it comes to business and when it comes to your career and the things that you love doing in life, all of this rejection is just data. Things are not in alignment yet. So this rejection is just bringing you on the path to be realigned, really. Let's look at rejection as projection. People often think that when they're rejected, especially in romantic relationships or even in friendships, that it has something to do with you. No, it never has anything to do with you. It has to do with the other person. This person and you are not operating on the same frequency. You guys are not in alignment. There's this beautiful quote by Phil Goodlife on Instagram. He says, it's never personal, it's just vibrational. And this is so true. 
So whenever someone projects a thought onto you or projects an emotion onto you and you make it your problem, you make it a giant deal, this is you making yourself out to be right and them out to be wrong. This is an attachment to who's right. But it's not about that. It's about alignment, harmony, frequency, vibration. If you guys are not aligned, it's just about falling away from each other. So you're not responsible for anyone else's projection. You're only responsible for your response response ability your ability to respond mel robbins talks about this she talks about the let them theory the let them theory is about acknowledging that we can't control other people when we let go of our expectations of others things just flow so much more smoothly when it comes to love and i see this so much especially with my clients Let's say you're dating someone and you put in all of this time, all of this money, all of this effort into the romance, into the dating, and this relationship ends up not working out. Do you regret giving it 100%? Is it wasted time for you? This means the act itself wasn't in alignment. You needed compensation to feel rewarded. I know I get trapped into this attachment, especially as a content creator online when I make a video and I expect it to go viral. I have this attachment to reaching the most amount of people possible so that my message is globally heard and recognized and I have a lot of Capricorn placement. So I wanna be seen, I wanna make this giant impact and legacy. However, the intention can quickly become a numbers game. When I originally started posting online, it was always about helping one person, changing one person's life, helping heal one person because you heal one person, you heal an entire universe. We are all little walking universes. Every time I get low views on my posts and it doesn't bother me, I know I had high intention, low attachment. If it does bother me, I had a low intention and a high attachment to the results. The best way to manifest with this law is be open to changing your path. You could have this vision of where you want to go. You see the end goal. You're like, I'm going there. I'm going to be a star. I'm going to be, my music is going to be all around the world. Everyone's going to know me, right? Let's say that that's the goal. With uncertainty factored in, we might change directions, we might find a higher ideal or something more exciting than the music. Maybe we meet a record producer and we're in the studio and we're singing and we're like, yeah, I'm gonna make all this music, it's gonna be amazing. And then we find out, right? we, we give the record producer advice on their marriage. And then all of a sudden he's crying, bawling his eyes out. And he's like, thank you, thank you for saving my marriage. And you're like, wow, this was the most powerful feeling I've ever felt. I just healed someone in a session. And then in the act towards chasing music, you realize you wanna be a therapist. Like this is how it works. Always go with high intention towards your destination, but always be open to uncertainty because the path will change. Detachment is based on the unquestioning belief and the power of self, trusting in yourself, knowing that no matter what you choose, you're prioritizing your highest joy. All we need to do is nurture our deepest intentions, nurture what's in your heart, and go with the flow of life. When you find yourself controlling things and being rigid to solutions and outcomes, you're not practicing the law of detachment, and you're actually becoming way less magnetic. Magnetism happens when you're like, I'm good. I'm good with whether this happens. I'm good with whether it doesn't. All in all, I'm good because I'm prioritizing my feeling. So if you haven't seen that podcast episode, Feeling is a Secret, listen to that. It's all about how you feel on your journey towards manifesting. Okay, so let's summarize how to actually practice the law of detachment. First things first, stay uncertain. Whenever you encounter anything, a problem, a person, stay grounded in the wisdom of uncertainty while expectantly waiting for a solution to happen or new opportunities to arise. You are good with the unknown because the unknown is truly all that there is. Number two, trust in the journey. The journey is the destination. There is actually no destination. The destination is death. And then even death is a portal to new life. The journey is where all the fruits, all the gems, all the nuggets of wisdom come from. Who are you becoming? on this journey? Do you like who you're becoming on this journey? Trust in the journey. It's the person you become in the process that matters most. Number three, listen to your heart. Listen to the compass that's guiding you, the intuitive voice that is moving you in the direction that you love most. Listen to your feelings. When you listen to how you feel, there is no need for any external reward. The feeling is the reward. 
Look at rejection as protection, redirection, and projection. Trust in the divine plan. If you're being rejected from a path, it's supposed to happen. Why would you want to be with anyone that does not want to be with you? Why would you want any opportunity that does not want you? It's just not meant for you. It's not personal. It's just vibrational. Don't be rigid in your thinking. Do not force solutions. Look at any problem that you encounter as an opportunity for growth because the problems coming into your sphere are things for you to level up, always. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a problem for you. So problems come to you so that you can understand how to navigate them with a solution. Don't force a solution, be open to learning about it. Be open to learning about yourself in that problem. Don't cling to material items. Everything that we experience here on earth we, is a temporary experience. We are just passengers to this beautiful life experience. Nothing goes with you when you die. This life is solely about evolving your soul and getting to spend physical time with people that you love. Once you understand that, everything else is gravy. Plants, nature, scents, all the five senses, see, smell, touch, taste, hear. Food is so good. This is all temporary. So don't be attached to your material items. Focus on you. When you can focus on evolving yourself, and following the highest timeline, you won't be attached to anything. You're just gonna be having a good time on this planet. Don't identify with your mind. You are not your thoughts. You are not all of the mental chatter within you. You are quite literally the observer of all of these thoughts. Distance yourself from the noise in your mind. Once you can do that, you're detached from all of this negative self-talk. And last but not least, be present because everything that exists is happening in the now. The things that happened yesterday are in the past. Things that are going to happen in the future are in the future. Ground yourself in this now moment and realize that this is where all of the energy lies. Focus on the now moment. The law of detachment is gonna make you so magnetic. It's going to make all of your manifestations come like that because you're not forcing anything. You're not controlling anything. You're allowing life to happen and watching as your intentions manifest. So I hope you guys loved this episode. If you did, leave me a review. Let me know how this is impacting you. Message me on Instagram if you wanna hear about a specific topic. Stay tuned for the next episode. I love you guys.